Welcome to the PDN Analyzer 2.0 On Demand Training. As we continue, Module 3 will provide detailed instructions on specifying analysis settings and limit checks, as well as running the analysis. Before I can run analysis, I need to make sure the description has all of the information so the simulator can accurately simulate the layout and check for any problem conditions. So to do that, I right click and choose settings. This brings up a dialog and it will first have this tab enabled simulation. And simulation will focus on metal conductivity, which is the conductivity and resistivity value of the copper. So I'll use the default setting of PCB copper, which reflects a less than ideal conductivity compared to pure copper. So the electro deposited copper is, is slightly less conductive than pure copper and results in different values over here. Another thing to note is that you can specify a temperature. So temperature will have an impact on the copper conductivity. So here we have a default 25 degrees C room temperature. And if I bump that up to let's say 125, you can see the conductivity value decrease and the resistivity value increase. I'll set that back to 25 and we'll run with that. But note here, you can make different configurations with different values to simulate corner cases at different temperatures. And again, this is only the ambient temperature of the copper. It does not take into account any of the heat that's generated by the components. Via wall thickness is used to specify the plating thickness inside the via barrels. There's a default value setting, but you can provide any value you need to relative to your fabrication process. Next, we'll take a look at limits. And limits to allow us to check that current density or current flow are not exceeded for copper objects in the design. So I can set a max current density for surface layers, and that would be tracks, planes, any copper object, and I'll set that to 200. The values can be referenced from IPC standards. I'll set a lower level value for internal layers and for a max current density of through hole vias or pads, I'll set this to 60 amps per millimeter square. So anything higher than these limits will be flagged as a violation. Next, for via current flow, I can specify my smallest via, which is 0.3 millimeters in this case, and set a max current value. If that value is exceeded, it will be reported. I choose a secondary value here, which is a larger size via, and from these two settings, the tool can automatically figure out the limit check for all other via sizes. And now I have my limit check set for the run. I'll click OK and then need to save these updates to the configuration file. Once that's saved, I take a quick glance here to make sure that all these items are set and ready to go. So if I hover over this ground here, it'll say ground power is ready to simulate, my sources are correctly defined, and all of my loads are correctly defined. If you don't get a check mark here, you'll need to go back into the individual settings to figure out what's needed to correctly configure and get the check mark here. Once set, I can click Analyze, and I'm ready to run. So this is now kicking off the process. It will generate ODB++ format in the background and provide that information to the simulator. Another thing it does is uses the copper thicknesses from the layer stack. So it's taking that information into account as well as our settings that we specified. And you'll see results here. 
We'll go into results in more detail in a later module. But for now, we'll just look at what we've run, and you'll see that there is a green check for this power configuration. However, we have a violation for the amount of current flowing through a given via. This concludes Module 3. Here we have seen how to define runtime settings and design specific limit checks. We also looked at running and analysis. In Module 4, we will explore viewing graphical results interactively. Please complete Exercise 3 at this time.